one years ago. It existed before, but the heaven and the earth came about 5,571 years ago. So this was a foundation. And he gives a very nice analogy about beginning versus foundation. So, even so, I was told that Don Newman was the one who got him interested in mathematics. Apparently, he was interested in mathematics before. So Leon narrates in this commentary on the Bible that his interest in mathematics started where he was reading his father's, that probably was an engineer, book on vector analysis. I don't know how old he was, he doesn't say, but maybe he was 12 or 13, I don't know. And I looked at, I see some shelves in Google Books, and it may have been a book by Gibbs, the famous Gibbs, or some other book. And there he found the following very curious phenomenon. How to dissect the diagonal of a parallelogram. So we have a parallelogram, and let's call it U and V. You use the vector calculus. So if you join a line between this vertex and the midpoint of this vertex and this edge, sorry, between the midpoint of this edge, of this parallelogram, and this vertex. Surprise! This is exactly one cell of this diagonal. So this is an ingenious way to dissect the diagonal of a parallelogram. And Leon, the 12-year-old Leon, was so amazed because he knew that it's impossible to dissect an angle. So he says, it's amazing that you cannot dissect an angle, but you can still dissect uh, the diagonal of a parallelogram. Of course, for us, the proof is trivial. So in honor of Leon, let's reconstruct the proof. So this vector is uh, u over 2 plus some number, let's call it s, times v minus u over 2. This point, this vector u over 2, and then v minus u over 2, and it's some multiple of it, and it meets it, on the other hand, it's some multiple of the addition, u plus b, diagonal. Now, if you move all the u stuff to one side, and move all the v stuff to the other side, you have multiple of u equals a multiple of v. And since you and V are not parallel, both left hand side and right hand side have to be equal to zero. And it turns out that S equals 2T and S plus T equals 1. So 3T equals 1 and T equals 1 self. So it's transaction. And then Leon goes on to say, this is very cute. But this is the beginning of my mathematics. It's not the foundation of my mathematics. Later on, I went to do bigger and deeper things. And what I currently do in partial differential equations and modular forms is the true foundation of my mathematics. So don't distinguish. So also in Genesis, it was the foundation, not the beginning. And Leon was very fond of the word foundation and fundamental. He was a truly fundamental mathematician. And what made him famous and got him to be a star in PDE was the Malgrange Aaron Price. This was the true foundation of his mathematics. It was a big open problem back in the early 1950s. Let me remind you what is a 
differentials, partial differential equations. When ordinary, ordinary differential equation, you have a function of a variable x, and you have some derivatives adding up. For example, let's an example of a linear differ ordinary differential equation. It also has the feature that has constant coefficients. And this is taught in every elementary class in differential equations. Let's review how to solve it, because the same thing will be later on uh, important. You try to have a solution of the form e to the alpha x. You plug it in, and you get alpha squared plus 3 alpha plus 2 times e to the alpha x equals 0. You solve it, and you get, in this case, alpha equals negative 1 and alpha equals negative 2. So you got two independent solutions, e to the minus x. So everything is fairly easy with ordinary differential equations. But what about partial differential equations? For example, the harmonic functions. Sorry. They satisfy the, the Laplacian, so called Laplacian. But you want to be able to solve general boundary value problems. Well, the Dirichlet problems. And not just for the Laplacian, you want an arbitrary differential equation. So an arbitrary differential equation features an arbitrary uh, partial differential operator. And if it's constant coefficient, you can write it as a polynomial in the differentiation in derivative respect to x1, respect to x2, respect to xn. Of course, it's easy to find solutions. To find other solutions is not so easy. And that's the other major contribution of a Leon Aaron Price later on. But to find f solutions, the same trick works. You write f of x1, xn, as e to the power alpha 1x1, da 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 da. Plug it in and get the p of alpha 1, alpha 2. And we all know that the polynomial in many variables always have solutions, uh, even in single variable. So there are infinitely many solutions. Each and every one of them is a solution of this so-called homogeneous partial differential equation with polynomial, with, sorry, constant coefficients. And take any linear combination of these. And you can even take integrals respect to the alpha space. So you can get lots and lots and lots of solutions of this. Linear, partial, differential equation with constant coefficients. Lots of them exist. But what is what not obvious in those days, if you replace zero by the so-called delta function, which is not really a function, it's a measure and distribution. And the function is a function that is infinity and the origin and zero as well. So to make it precise, there's somebody called Lorenz Schwartz uh, that made everything into a theory of distributions and everything can be made precise. Since this is a distribution, you cannot hope that this is an ordinary function. If you take a regular function, differentiable function, and you apply a differential operator, you get another nice function. You cannot get a distribution, a crazy function, out of a nice function. So this has to be also a distribution. And nobody could prove that Aaron Price and independently Malgrand 